For those that are unaware what happened, I messed up big time with my previous review of this graphics card and I couldn't stand having that video up, which is why I was battling myself and finally made the decision to take that video of mine down. So here's my reworked and corrected review of the AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT graphics card. Previously I've said things about the temperatures of it that simply aren't true. Don't get me wrong, in my opinion I still believe this reference design has temperature issues, but they're nowhere near as bad as I made them out to be last time. More on that later. Now some will surely come with wild speculations such as me being pressured by AMD or whatever to address my false statements. But no, actually I want to let you guys know, neither do I have any contact with AMD nor with Nvidia, the products I purchase with my own money. Either way AMD has released two new Navi GPUs, albeit I'll just be focusing on the Radeon RX 5700 XT for today. The review of the non-XT version should follow shortly if all goes according to plan for me. Right now it needs to be said that there are only AMD reference models available, meaning the cooling solution isn't necessarily the best and the noise levels aren't exactly great either. At the time of this video, the RX 5700 XT comes in at about 400 US dollars. Custom versions, if the latest news can be trusted, should arrive sometime in mid-August or partially in September as far as I've heard. Now sure, many others have already published their reviews of these graphics cards, but I'd like to once again remind you I do not receive review samples of this type, I pay for these products with my own money to bring you these tests. Sometimes there happen to be delays when it comes to the availability, but I'm not complaining, please just know that this is the reason for me being so late with my tests. And this time around I'm even later to the party since I clearly messed up the first version of this review. But on the bright side I'm there for testing not with release date drivers but rather updated latest drivers and AMD already did do some optimizing in the meantime. But enough talking, I still notice the 5700 XT is partially running pretty damn hot. It's not necessarily the GPU that's problematic but rather the VRAM temperatures. But there's a simple way to improve that situation and I'll show you what I did. While I've already repeated myself often enough by now, I'll say it again, Nvidia's RTX Super Refresh with a much better price to performance ratio as opposed to what Nvidia had before is the result and answer to aim these new graphics cards. Alright, those that know me well know that I love card designs like these when it comes to the aesthetics. Don't get me wrong, I know these things often tend to not have a real chance at the heat the cards produce, but the aesthetics really do it for me personally. Some will agree with me, others will just see it practically and realistically. In my case however I had no other choice. At the time of this video there simply is just the reference design out. And the first time AMD announced the 5700 XT I wasn't quite sure what to make of that weird dent in the design. In real life though it looks pretty good I gotta say. Now for cooling we get a blower style fan that more or less exhausts air through the back of the cart. At idle the fan is actually super quiet. What I also like is the fact that we get a bit of lighting on here. The Radian logo on the side nicely lights up, in red obviously. The backplate managed to impress me too. Looks really nice, but I'd rather not talk too much about the looks here, what matters is the tech behind it all. Other than with Vega, with Navi AMD no longer relies on the GCN architecture, that's many years old by now. Instead the new RDNA, Radian DNA comes into play. Basically it's a new architecture, but in its core there's still some GCN left in there, so that's something we can argue about. Either way Navi is based on the new 7 nanometer process, finally does not come with the pricey, not so appreciated super fast HBM2 memory and instead is equipped with GDDR6 just as it's the case with Nvidia's GPUs. Furthermore Team Red apparently wanted to match the competition and decided to go for 8GB of VRAM2, so things are looking promising so far. It of course needs to be said, AMD has released more traditional or rather simpler cards. Navi doesn't support real ray tracing. Whether or not that really matters at this point in time is debatable. I personally don't really care about ray tracing yet. But it might be technology that's inevitable in the future, a couple years from now. At least that's my assumption. But now what you're actually here for, most likely, you want to see how the RX 5700 XT performs, especially compared to the RTX 2060 Super that comes in at a similar price. Enjoy!
So, as you've seen, it more or less is confirmed what AMD has said about Navi back when it was announced. The RX 5700 XT can in fact keep up with the RTX 2070. In some game titles, the Radeon card even comes out on top by a few FPS. In other titles, though, the AMD GPU drops behind a bit. Since the RTX 2070 soon will go end of life, it's being replaced by the RTX 2060 Super and offers comparable performance at a more attractive price point. So, as things are looking right now, the Radeon RX 5700 XT and the RTX 2060 Super are priced similarly. We therefore can compare these GPUs with each other and as we've clearly seen, the performance is comparable too. Gaming at a resolution of 1440p with the RX 5700 XT is a piece of cake. If you're willing to sacrifice some graphics details, you could even lower your settings slightly and enjoy butter smooth frame rates at 4K. The performance AMD is bringing to the table is really, really impressive. And with AMD GPUs, admittedly, things aren't always looking that good. The biggest weaknesses always happen to be the power draw and the temperatures. Thanks to the RDNA architecture and the 7 nanometer manufacturing process, the efficiency has improved by a lot, meaning the power consumption is only slightly higher than what Nvidia's comparable models draw from the wall. We're talking of just 10 to 20 watts more on the AMD card. That is pretty much negligible. After all, there are games in which you get much better performance with a 5700 XT over an RTX 2070 or 2060 Super. It's just temperatures once more that are a bit problematic for AMD. That, however, applies to the reference design. And things aren't exactly always looking pretty with Nvidia's designs either. Either. With the default fan curve set by AMD, tested on my open air test bench, the card reaches 83 degrees Celsius at max. The junction temperature is at 96 degrees when tested on an open air test bench. And this is where my mistake came to be previously. Instead of using and reporting the normal GPU temperature that's being measured at the GPU surface, for whatever reason ever, I was obsessively fixated on that junction temperature. Those two values cannot be compared with each other though. With the junction temperature, the GPU's transistors are pretty much measured. And that value, to make matters worse, I compared with Nvidia's graphics cards. Just so you know, Nvidia generally only reads out surface temps, so it should be pretty pretty much self-explanatory, the junction value should be higher than the actual GPU temperature measured at the surface. This is why I constantly mentioned those 107 degrees Celsius once the RX 5700 XT was installed into a case. Sure, that's correct, it's not a lie, but it was simply the incorrect temperature value to compare and judge by. I painted the wrong picture. I have no idea how dumb I must have been to fail to see the obvious. I only noticed a couple minutes before publishing my initial review, so I'm at shock myself. Maybe I was just craving for sensation, maybe I wanted something extreme so I can make a video about it. Maybe it was that, I don't know. All I know for sure is that I'm dealing with a lot of stress recently and have been super tired for a very long time now. And let me tell you, when I'm tired I make the dumbest mistakes imaginable. Usually it's the complete obvious things I mess up, but I mostly only notice one once it's too late, so I think this is how it all went down. Either way, the temperatures are much, much lower than I initially reported. The temperatures are high, but not critical. The fan is loud, but not unbearably loud, which seemed a bit weird to me, since I expected it to be super noisy. So I did some more testing and quickly found the issue. With two of the latest AMD graphics drivers, the fan curve in no instance exceeds the 2100 RPM mark, no matter how hot the card actually runs. Out of curiosity, I decided to install the 5700 XT into a real system and continue testing there, not on a test bench. The card climbs all the way up to about 90 degrees Celsius. It is hot, but it's somewhat okay. A bit more alarming are those VRAM temperatures. GDDR6 memory, if possible, shouldn't exceed the 95 degree mark. Well, in my case, I was already hitting 98 degrees. And no, I haven't tested with Furmark. I just ran it for demonstration purposes. I get the same exact results in game. In my opinion, it's just a matter of time until that video memory bites the dust with temps almost at 100 degrees. I've heard from other sources there's not quite the right amount of contact pressure between the graphics card and the cooler, which explains the high temperatures with these reference designs. 
What you could do to lower temps is to manually increase and adjust the fan curve for your individual case. Sure, it's not the best solution either, especially since the noise levels can get really high, but at least there's something you can do about it. For instance, once again installed in a system, temperatures in the range of 70s and low 80s for the GPU and VRAM temps respectively. With these results, I believe you shouldn't run into issues in the long run. You should be fine, but it's only doable by increasing the fan speed. AMD's default fan curve may be easy on one's ears, but the card itself is sweating. So this is why I'd definitely recommend adjusting the fan curve. In the future, we could see this done by AMD themselves with future driver updates. While I now have a true jet engine experience in terms of noise level, the graphics card should be fine for continuous operation at full load. So I would suggest waiting for custom models with better cooling solutions. We might as well even see an increase in clock speeds, bringing us slightly more performance. Even though I gotta say, the AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT managed to deeply impress me when it comes to the offered performance, power draw and price to performance ratio. Due to the issues with the temperatures and the high noise levels, I have to give it a lower rating though. Still this Navi GPU deserves my silver award. And yeah, that was a bit of a longer video, but there was a lot to cover. So with that said, thanks so much for watching till the very end.